Hello, dear students. Today, let us learn one more theorem on connected spaces. A continuous image of a connected space is connected. Continuous image, very, very important. It is continuous image. Okay, continuous image of what space? Connected space, connected topological space is connected. So that's a theorem. So what is given? Given is let us take a connected the topological space. Let X be connected and take a function. Let F from X to Y be a continuous function and onto. Why the word onto here? Because I have to take the image of that. Image of that. Which image? Continuous image. So that is why it is continuous and onto. So let, let us take X be a connected space and take a function from X to Y. F is the function which is continuous and it is also on to. What we have to prove? TPT, Y is connected. To prove that Y is connected. Suppose Y is disconnected. That means what? It has got a separation. Right? I can write down Y as union of two sets which two are, you know, non-empty, disjoint, open sets. That's another definition of saying it's connected, not connected, no, disconnected. Remember, we proved one first theorem on connectedness, right? First theorem on connectedness, okay? So I can write down Y as union of two non-empty, disjoint, and open sets, okay? So Y is union of these two sets, okay? Now, what do we know about X? I don't know anything about Y. We assumed Y is disconnected. So I got two sets here, B and C, named you know, B and C. What are B and C? Non-empty disjoint open sets, correct? Now, I know only about X. Now, how will I get X? I'll take F inverse on both sides. Since Y equal to B union C, we'll take F inverse on both sides. And what is my F inverse Y? F inverse Y is nothing but X. Why? Because our F is on to function. F is on to function. So F inverse Y is nothing but capital X, the pre-image. Okay. And that is equal to F inverse B union C. I can write down F inverse B union F inverse C. Let us call this as equation one. So I've got X as what? Union of two sets. Union of two sets. Remember, we assumed Y is disconnected, no? Right. Now, I should get a contradiction. Let us see where we get the contradiction. So, what is given to me? Given to me is X is connected. Right. Let us see. Now, let us call this as equation 1. Let us call this as equation 1. Now, what about uh, you know, these two sets? I've got X is union of two sets. Okay, fine. Those two sets are what? First one. Are they non-empty? They are non-empty because B is not null, C is also not null. Therefore, F inverse B and F inverse v, C both are not null. Not null. That is not non-empty. So, two non-empty sets. Are they disjoint? Take the intersection, the second point. Second point, take the intersection of those two. That is nothing but F inverse, uh, you know, uh, B intersection C. That is nothing but, what is B intersection C? B intersection C is disjoint, right? So B and C are disjoint, no? So I got B intersection C is null. So what is F inverse of null set is null. So I've got, uh, you know, X as union of two sets. They are non-empty, first point. The second point, they are disjoint. Third point, are they open sets? F inverse B and F inverse C. Yes, they are open sets because F is continuous. We know that inverse of open sets are open sets. Since B and C are open sets, F inverse B and F inverse C both are open because F is continuous. Because F is continuous. So, by 1, 2, 3, 4, what I have got? I have got by this uh, equation 1 and these Roman letters 1, 2, 3. I have got what? X is union of two sets. Those two sets are non-empty, disjoint, open sets. That means what? I have got X has a separation. X has a separation. X has a separation. That means what? X is disconnected. 
but actually what is x x is connected therefore it is a contradiction so why we got this contradiction because we assumed y is not connected therefore y has to be connected hence the theorem hence the theorem so we'll stop now we'll take up one more theorem in the next session